All right, I'm working on the wheels for the mauler, and I have um, glued up these blocks. This is just a little extra because it needed to be just about a quarter of an inch taller than what this is. So now I need a way to attach it down to the CNC table and still be able to mill all of this or route all of this. So I've taken this block and I've countersunk it, and then I've marked the center here. I've done the same thing on here, and so I'm going to take this nail, and I'm going to drive it right in the center. And use that. <laughs> okay, my nail's a little big. I'm going to get a smaller nail. Alright, I think this will work a little better. So that should keep it centered. And then I'm going to do it like this, and then I can I can screw this way when I flip it over and screw it down to the table. That'll give me some. And I spaced these holes, so hopefully they're going to go into the these wheels and in such a way that... Um, it goes up into a part that's not going to be routed away because I certainly don't want my router bit to hit these screws. Okay, so now I can screw these down to the table and that should hold this uh, while it's routed. I got it screwed down. Well, it's not screwed there. It's got a screw here and a screw back there. and But it's it's solidly down there. And uh, got it squared up to the edges. And I've got the machine zeroed. And so now we are ready to start cutting. I got a blank set up on the CNC machine. And I'm getting ready to start cutting out the wheel for uh, the uh, muller. Okay, let's fire this baby up. Now I'll make a bunch of bit changes. The bit that I've got in here right now is one that's got a bunch of miles on it, but it's gonna, uh, this stuff, it, it kind of dulls these blades. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you finish using this blade up uh, in the first part of the roughing process. Alright, so here is the pattern right off the CNC machine. You can see it's got some kind of rough edges on it, so I'm going to have to sand this down. But um, the uh, I also wanted to show you here, I had to fill this with some uh, Dur uh, Durham's water putty because I actually went through trying to get these cut. There's two of them. I actually went through, uh, well, the third router is the one. I had a like a roto zip on there, and it broke. And then I put a, uh, another large router on there that I've had for years, and it burned up. I think it was just old. And then, uh, so then I got a new one to put on there, and that's what finished it up. But in the middle of that, the settings got off, and it burned that, it drilled, you know, routed down through here and messed it up. So I had to fill it and then redo it. But... Anyway, we got them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount these on my wood lathe 
and get them sanded down um, so that they're smooth. This is the block right here that I used to attach them down to the table. Uh, on the CNC machine I just put it on the bandsaw and cut the corners off so that it would spin on here. Attached it to a plate that will attach to my lathe and so then on this side over here let's see so then over here we've got uh, the pattern sticking out let me turn it on for a second okay you can see it's not just perfectly centered there's some wobble in it but I don't really care about that uh, all I want it to do is spin while I sand it all right let me get ready Well, we're getting there. I'm going to hit a little bit more. Okay. Not perfect, but I think that's going to be good enough for what we need for this. Well... Yeah, no, I think it's going to be good. I think that'll work for this pattern. Okay, I'm going to do the other one. All right, the next thing we've got to do to this pattern is to get alignment pins put in it. And I've marked it on the side uh, right there where I want it to line up. And uh, let's say I marked it again over here just to be sure. Okay, so what we've got to do is um, I've got these are the holes where it was screwed down originally so I'm going to reuse those holes well I think I am let's see how tight they are that, those might actually work pretty well I'll just make them a little bit deeper okay yeah I think that's what I'm going to do okay so you need some rod which is uh, this is I think it's 764 but if I just had this if I didn't have it I probably would have bought some that was you know eighth inch or three sixteenths or maybe even quarter inch but that'd probably be a little too big for this but anyway you need to decide how far you want it to go down in there and I'm thinking you know I want it down in there about that far and we have we've got to make some pins like this and you can see see the tip on that I've got a you need something with a point on it because what we're going to do is make two of these we're going to put them in here set the other half on top and hit it and it'll mark where the holes go on the other side so uh, I actually just need one of these at a time okay so um, let's, let me tell you how I made that you just cut off a little piece of this rod and to me the easiest way to do it was with a Dremel You put it in there. So this one's got a little burr on it, so you just turn it on and run your file along it. And that'll round over that edge. Okay, now I'm going to drill this one out. It's actually that length already. So, if I take this and drop it down in there, and then line this up with the pin that we already did, just like that, make sure these sides are lined up well, give it a bump. And there's my dimple right there. So now I'm going to drill this side out, trying to get it as straight up and down as I can. Oh, 
All right, I need to pull my pointed pointed piece out. Boy, I just barely got that. Okay, and then I'm going to use this one to measure me off another one. Okay, put one in each side. Now we're talking. <clears throat> okay, so you can see now it's lined up really well. Next thing we're going to do is we've got to get this pattern painted and we'll want to take these pins out. I'm going to fill these other holes and then uh, take the pins out and uh, get, get these painted and then I'll come back. I'll re-drill them out uh, just to clean the paint out and then we'll um, set these uh, pins for, to be permanent. I'm getting ready to put a coat of paint on these patterns and it's, it's like it's going to be 100 degrees today and uh, humidity is like 100%. I don't know, it's just way up there. I'm using this kind of, a, it's called a almond. I don't know why I even have this paint. It's ugly. Um, I don't really care usually what a pattern looks like. So I'm going to use this, um, use it up on these patterns. I painted one just the other day with the same paint. Problem is, you can't hardly tell where you've painted and where you haven't. These are just some little pads with nails. Drive a nail in there, cut the heads off. And that way you can paint both sides and stuff. Well, this one's a little, a little small for this size. Okay, I'm going to keep painting these, and we'll be back. All right, this is half of the wheel pattern, and the final coat was blue, which I like a lot better than the color we were using. And I'm going to get the mold made for it. I, uh, I added a piece of fabric back here in the back to catch uh, sand, so it didn't, I don't lose it down that back side. Okay, we're set up for the pour. Uh, this is our wheel right here. Got a place over here for some uh, pour some muffins, and then this over here is a another pattern uh, for a, a lathe spider if I've got enough aluminum for it. Okay, this uh, this mold for the wheel is the seventh one that I've done. I uh, the first one I poured. Uh, I didn't realize it, but the ceiling of the mold had collapsed, and so the aluminum came up through the top, ran all over the ground. It was a big mess. Uh, then I uh, remade that mold and uh, thought maybe, well, I'll put some screws in that top part, kind of like Myford Boy did on his stuff. I tried that and uh, it worked in the in the test but then when I made the actual mold uh, it uh, it caved in too so I took the mold and I I took the mold and I drilled holes in it that way each half would sit on these holes and support itself and that seems to have worked pretty well uh, we'll know once I pour this so anyway this is the seventh time I've actually made this mold uh, there's been a whole lot of other issues but this is the seventh time I've made the mold but I think it's a good one and uh, we'll get it poured here in just a minute I 
All right, this is, so this is our molar wheel. Uh, let's bust it open and see what we got. Well, it looks pretty good. The only thing, the only thing I see wrong with it at all is just a little bit of a divot right there, which isn't going to hurt anything. Okay. Awesome. <laughs>